We've been so lucky on number file of having Ron Graham talking about Graham's number. It was amazing that we could do that. And Graham's number was a famous number. That was the largest number at that time. It was the largest number that had ever been used in a proper mathematical proof. And then we got Ron Graham to talk about it. Is he fantastic? 12 is not enough, it turns out. And this other slightly bigger number. But before Ron Graham, the number, the largest number that had been used in a proper mathematical proof was a different number called skew's number or skewess number. It's a word that I've only ever seen written down, so I'm not quite sure. But it's a large number, and I'll show you what that number is. 10 to power 10 to power 10 to power 34. Now this is going to be a large number. This is a number that's something like trillions of trillions of trillions digits long. I mean, massive. I mean, Google, a Google is 100 digits long. This is trillions and trillions and trillions of digits long, right? So this is huge. So where did this number come from? So this number was like the Graham's number of its time, such a huge number. I mean, even Isaac Asimov wrote about this number. So Isaac Asimov, I've taken this from Brady, this is not mine, this is Brady's book, I took it off his shelf. Isaac Asimov, the, the science fiction author, wrote about this number as well, wrote an article about it in a kind of number file kind of way. If there was a number file in the 1970s, we would have had Isaac Asimov on talking about Skewer's number, which would have been amazing. That would have been cool. And a 1970s number file would have been awesome. We would have had massive ties and sideburns and we'd be constantly smoking. I want to see that. Compared to Graham's number, this is tiny. But at that time, that this could, I mean, talking, this is before you know, computers and things. I mean, this is a massively large number. What was the problem they were solving with this number? It's to do with primes and counting primes. So the classic problem, which goes way back to how many primes are there, let's say less than a given number, right? So this goes back to Gauss. After I've talked about this before, the prime number theorem, which is you know, fantastic stuff. Um, primes less than x, uh, which we write as pi of x. So this is not pi, this is pi as in p for prime, rather than p for perimeter, which I think is what the, maybe what pi comes from. So if we do pi of 10, how many primes are there less than 10? Uh, two, and three, and five, and seven. Tell me if I'm wrong. All right, so there's four, so that'd be four. And if we did, how many primes less than a uh, hundred? Uh, I know this, there's this 25 less than a hundred. And if I did, how many primes are there less than uh, a billion? Then less than a billion? That number is 50 million, 847,534 primes, right, less than that. Now, Gauss, this is um, incredible, when he was 15 years old, and you'd think he'd have better things to do, like hanging around the shops or something, but when he was 15 years old, he came up with a formula to approximate what this value might be. His formula originally was, this number is round about x over the log of x. That's the natural log of x. You might write that as ln of x. Some of you may have seen that. So this would have been like this. So this is an approximation though. So it's, you know, it's a bit skewed. It's not quite right. They did come up with a better approximation. I want to show you the better approximation. Uh, it was Dirichlet who came up with this. And his approximation that the uh, prime counting function is something called, we'll call it li of x. It's called the logarithmic integral. It's a function. Some of you will not be familiar with what I'm going to do, which is fine. It's just, it's just a function. You just say there's uh, you know, a clever maths formula for this. If you are familiar with what I'm doing, then you'll understand what this is. Uh, this is defined as the integral between 2 and x of 1 over the natural log of t dt. But yes, a formula. So there's a formula for this. So let's apply it. Let's just see what it does. Let's do the same numbers. Let's do 10. So let's change that to a 10. Okay. If I do it for 10, uh, I think the number you get is 5. 
Which is not bad, okay, so it's not right, it's not correct, but it's, hey, it's not bad, five, and it's four. Uh, if you do it for 100, you get 29. Uh, it was actually 25, so you're four off. It's, it's pretty good, actually, it's pretty accurate. And if we do it for the big number, it gets more accurate the, number, the bigger the numbers are. So let's do it for a billion. If we do it for a billion, how close are we going to get to the true value, which was 50,847,534? You get 50,849,234. You're so close. Considering how big these numbers are, that is um, 1,700 off which is not much when you're talking about these size of numbers. Uh, so this is really quite accurate, it's really good. But it does appear, and you can see there, that this estimation always seems to be bigger. So always overestimating, it's always bigger. And Gauss had a look at this as well. He said, Gauss thought it always seems to be bigger, and he checked it too. He checked it up to like three million, and it was always bigger. So people thought your prime counting function was always going to be less than this, this estimation thing we're doing. This is what they thought. Okay, that'd be great. Until, until Littlewood, that's another mathematician, a Cambridge mathematician at the beginning of the 20th century. We're talking about 100 years ago, 1914. Littlewood realized that it's not always true. That your logarithmic integral approximation sometimes isn't bigger, that inequality sign flips. It flips, and in fact, it does that infinitely many times throughout the numbers, but he, took, he couldn't tell you the first time it flipped. It must be something big, but he couldn't tell you the first time he did it. So this mathematician, Skewis, uh, found a approximation or a bound for when the first time this inequality finally flips. This number is his bound. He say, he's saying it must be less than this. It flips, and it flips at a value less than that number. He doesn't know what it is yet, but he knows it's less than that. It could be a lot less. It could be a lot less, exactly. It could be a lot less than that, but he knows it's not bigger than that. So the first time it flips, now, we've improved this estimate since then. We now think that it might flip somewhere around, let's call it 1.398 times 10 to the power 316. And actually, we think this is actually quite a good estimate for Skewis number, the first time this flips. So we're talking a number that is a Google, 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 big number. We don't know exactly where that flip is. We still haven't found where that flip is. We're pretty sure it's somewhere around that area, though. We're pretty confident of that. We have found a run of integers where the inequality is the other way around. Uh, there is a run of integers between these numbers, 1.53 times 10 to the 1,165 and 1.65 times 10 to the power 1,165. There is a run of consecutive integers where this inequality is the other way around, by which I mean your prime counting function is greater than the estimate. This is an example of thinking that because a pattern holds for a very long time, it's going to hold forever. And it turns out, no. So this is a pattern that holds, which we think for numbers, going bigger and bigger and bigger until they're getting huge sizes of Googles, of Googles, of Googles. And it appears that this inequality holds and then it flips. All number five videos are supported by MSRI. But today's episode was also brought to you by lynda.com. Lynda has a great range of video courses and tutorials. Something you'd uh, never have gotten in the 1970s. Almost anything you want to learn, Lynda has you covered. I was going through a few things just yesterday and stumbled over this really cool course about recording sound from drum kits. It's really fascinating and something I could have used last week to be honest. 
Linda have also got all sorts of great stuff covering photography, video creation, business, software tips, you name it. There's over 3,000 video courses and 100,000 tutorials in the catalogue. You can sign up now for a free 10-day trial. That's unlimited access to all of them by going to lynda.com slash number file or clicking on the link in the video description. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash number file. Give it a try and they'll know you came from here on this channel. Our thanks to Linda for supporting number file.